Um, hi, everyone. This will momentarily turn on. Um, so I think this is the third year I've attended this conference. It's a great meeting of the minds from all over, and um, I'm happy to finally present on something that um, our company at AbbVie is working on. Um, we've been with the foundation for two years now, I think, and um, also involved in the content committee as well as the community committee, I think. So um, basically, um, today I'll be talking about how we've done some data standardization so we can look across studies. And um, I'll put in a plug for my colleague, Ben. He's presenting a poster on the uh, technical details of um, this project that you'll see. Um, please go talk with him, too. Um, and just our disclosure, I work at Appy. So, um, you know, I'll, there are a lot of overlapping themes that people have talked about in this session um, on open data. And, you know, Victoria talked about this as well. Does curation matter? And when you think about it, we do it in our daily lives all the time. You know, you're hiding posts on Facebook. You're clearing out your closet. If you get a tiny home, you definitely have to curate your belongings to fit. Um, or you get research articles on Scoop It. So... Um, it's something that we all do consciously and subconsciously. And um, there's a great um, artistic curator, Hans Ulrich Obrist. There's a book um, about ways of curating. And the, there's a review that, um, from The Independent that said that he wants to explain why making exhibitions matters. And shouldn't this be the case with data? Because honestly, why else are we here if not to showcase the data and see new things within it? And so what we're trying to do is build a collection of data with a purpose and a theme um, so that you can find discoveries within it. Um, but it is a talk on data standardization, but I wanted to paint a, a vibrant picture for you so you guys are still awake. Um, basically, standardization is a means to, to capitalize on, um, we're trying to use the underlying structure of Transmart's database. Um, and we know that there's variation in different studies, but are there general concepts that we can use across the studies that would allow us to, you know, easily query on common questions or workflows? And so um, what we've done is structure the data so that you can see these themes um, within our data and within some public data. Um, so I'll be talking about, you know, our current state of Transmart at AbbVie and how we're seeing this as a bridge to 17.1, which is another effort that our company is involved in as a member of the Pro Alliance. And I'll go into a little bit about our standardization, things to think about with longitudinal data, um, a little bit more about the Pro Alliance, and then uh, what are the benefits to this approach as well as what's our wish list, because there's always a wish list. So um, for starters, here's sort of the current state of Abby. Um, you know, our current feature, our current um, setup is version 1.2.5, which is sort of pre 16.1. And we had been really enjoying the features um, that came along with this. Um, you know, we're currently using the API, the browse. Um, we'd like to be able to have more time series data, as everyone has mentioned in these talks. Um, we do use Oracle. And, um, you know, we are currently loading our data, sometimes um, incrementally when, when possible, if you don't have to delete the whole data set to reload it. Um, and primarily we're using Kettle, although we have tried and we have used TM Data Loader for certain studies in the past, um, and we look forward to learning Batch. And I encourage all of you to learn all about all the different types of ETLs that people use. Um, so basically, what we what we've done um, is, you know, we're sort of thinking there are always Transmart can be very manual in how you um, curate the data. Uh, it's a benefit and a curse. So we're trying to look through our data and find best practices. Um, and for instance, there are just some basic things that I think we've all pointed out before, but. I'll, I'll just highlight them again so that if we have new users and old users kind of see what our approach has been. Um, in our Transmart instance before, we had 
um, lupus studies, um, specifically their SLE studies, and sometimes um, you can think about lupus nephritis as a subset of SLE, but we weren't capturing that with our metadata. You know, if you look at these two independent geo studies that um, come out of the Kressler lab from U Michigan, one of our um, fellow Transmart Foundation members, um, you see that we put lupus nephritis here. But um, what we've done now is we've added SLE here, systemic lupus erythematosus. I can never say that properly, but um, so we've done that for both studies. Um, and in a sense, you're seeing that we still have 57 patients, but you can see that while they have SLE, they also have uh, lupus nephritis. Um, and that's just going to allow us to then be able to use um, the CUI that, that Ben has worked on with members of the Hive to answer some basic questions. And um, what I'm not showing with this uh, mock-up is that we have a few different um, guided set, uh, apps similar to um, what Thompson Reuters had done with Boringer a few years ago and presented um, to have guided workflows for users to sort of work through common questions, the common themes that I was talking about. So um, if you look at this example, we have a single gene expression. And you, what this UI enables is you can type in the gene of interest, and you can type in the diseases that you're interested in and clinical variables and then um, bring up multiple studies. And what you'll see here is we have two, three studies here, two studies here. Um, and while it's not meta-analysis, we're allowing you to look at both studies in one place and see if there are trends going on. Um, and this could be very powerful, um, especially if your data sets are all over the place. It, it's just a nice way to visualize the data coming from Transmart in a UI. Um, and one other best practice that we've worked on is, um, as, as many of you know, sometimes people submit data to GEO and they don't always put in all of their metadata because they don't realize that it might be important to other people or they just know it and um, so then everyone should know it. So if you look at a GEO data set, you know, sometimes the data is not actually in there. You know, we're looking at the, the, one of the SLE studies from before. And you'll notice that it says here that demographic, clinical, and histological characteristics are in the supplemental table. So if you go to the supplemental table, you see that all patients are Caucasian. OK, there's the race. So um, it wasn't in the geo data set per se, but it, it is data that's available. So what we've done is for some common fields, we're trying to go back to the primary literature and fill in the holes if we can. And what that enables is Again, just better structure to our data, a more consistent structure. Um, you can see it here. It's definitely human uh, gene chip, but um, we hadn't put that in a species folder under demographics or, sub sorry, under subjects. So um, once we've done that, you can then make comparisons um, based on these topics. So here's another example of, you know, had, because we filled in this data, you can then ask more questions. So let's say you're looking at studies for uh, oxysterol binding protein expression in normal and RA patients and human patients. Um, based on this um, UI, you can look at species because, hey, I'm, I'm interested in species. What do we have available? And then if you want to limit the results between human and mouse, you can easily do that. So this is expanding on what's already available within Transmart in a new way. Um, and then I'll just, I'm just going to touch upon, you know, this sort of goes along with the wish list, sort of like what we're hoping will happen in the future. But there are different factors to consider with longitudinal studies, and I think the community is on it. Um, and, you know, I would say that we're, we're looking at how um, time points are structured um, as we plan the 17.1 uh, project so that future versions of Transmart will be able to sort of reflect more accurately longitudinal data. And it's important to think about things like whether or not it's a visit or um, time series data. And um, I'll just point out that with with our um, implementation, we're looking to sort of pad digits so that you get proper sorting. And um, 
uh, ways to numerically show before or after baseline, just positive or negative. Um, this is our initial approach at AbV for time points. And then um, one other thing that I'll just put in as food for thought, there are lots of different time-related data points um, within our, um, we, we're sort of representing um, the paths as a base concept and the core concept being the terminal point here. And um, I'll just mention that, you know, there are different types of time-related data, and we just have to think about how to treat these appropriately to reflect the um, analysis and visualization. You know, um, there are different ways of representing data or duration. There's, you know, a relative, a, a delta change in, you know, day, change in time. There's also duration, which could be thought of as a delta. Um, for you know how long someone has been on medication and how should we represent that in our visualizations as well as um, frequency measurements or sometimes you know with studies you don't even have a time point you have pre and post so you know they're just things that we'll have to think about as we keep going um, so as, as we sort of start to get into new versions we sort of want to think about these concept codes and how to query. Um, you know, right now our strategy is to create consistent concept paths. Um, and then see, you know, we might want to find ways to simplify this process in the future. And um, we can experiment with parsing some of this data out. And, you know, right now the reality is that these are different. Um, the data is the same, but it might be organized differently. And, you know, there's got to be ways we can sort of pull this out. So um, just I think this was touched upon in Keith's opening, but I thought I'd include this slide that 17.1 is focusing on some longitudinal data support, Arvado's support, um, the, and some work on the core and APIs. Um, we're also um, working on RNA-seq data with the Pro Alliance AbbVie. Um, to, to get that data type um, in such a way that you can go beyond the gene level. And um, I think basically um, what I can talk about is sort of what are the benefits to our current approach with the current version of Transmart and then sort of lead, lead that to our, our wish list for the future and see what you guys think. Um, about um, some of those wishes. Because um, I think I've heard them echoed in earlier talks, um, and, and it, it's, it's worth discussing, um, maybe during the panel. So basically, if you think about the current workflow with Transmart as we know it today, in 16.1, you're picking the study on the, in the navigator. Then you're making your cohorts as you drag and drop. And you can ask one or two variable questions about the variable, clinical variables, and you'll get a visualization. When you see that visualization, it's going to spur on more questions. But in order to ask those questions, it kind of disrupts your flow, and you have to go back and start again. And so uh, the way that our UI works right now is that you can think, what am I interested in? What pieces of data do I want to see in one place? And is it available? And so what we're doing here is we're hitting Transmart and asking, is that data there? We're building a matrix from that data, and then we're allowing you to visualize that um, with um, Angular, D3, or Spotfire. And um, basically with Embase, that's, that's our um, current approach right now, you can ask these questions without needing to restart the query process because you've already made your matrix. Um, so that's our current approach. And what we're hoping for is that, you know, um, right now the current standard is we have to standardize our data to these formats um, in order to, to uh, really ask these queries. And so it'd be great if um, other members wanted to adopt a standard format or um, code guidelines. And, um, you know, maybe I don't, you know, to be honest, I need to explore what our, our current um, curated offering is. But if there's room for us to sort of work and see with the content committee if there's a standard format available for us to kind of 
um, maybe not adopt the same terminology, but be able to track the metadata that's in these studies. Um, and, and even um, as we start talking about Arvados, um, are there ways to, to have different versions but still access them? Um, access the data and you know what other tools are available um, from the various vendors and institutions today that can really reduce the cost of curation time I know we're hearing from many of you today and um, I, I think we know curation is important we know that everyone does it and so it's it's a matter of just how can we come together and save some time with it uh, and really get value on the investment and so I hope that what I've shown today shows you that, you know, you can make common themes with data. And um, our UI is allowing us to hit Transmart and pull back data in a pretty efficient, modular user experience. Um, and feel free to talk to Ben more about um, what work has gone into that. And because we're curating consistently, it's allowing us to do these workflows across multiple studies without creating a, a giant loading each time uh, to do cross-study um, analysis. And um, we're able, able to sort of incrementally curate by doing this as well so that if we have um, the same types of data each time, very routine formats, we can hit that first and then think about the new data types as we go. And um, so I guess to, to finish, I just encourage us all to sort of think about, continue to think about the standards, um, attend the standards talk tomorrow, um, and continue to have the discussion. Um, and I just want to acknowledge um, the members of the team Ben is here. Sherry couldn't make it today, but she um, obviously would like to be here. Um, Sukru has worked on gene set analysis for one of the apps, and um, our translational research group in immunology has been, they've been great partners. And then obviously the Hive, um, we've done a lot of the UI work with them, uh, and just like to thank the foundation, um, the Pro Alliance, and the consortia we're a part of. So thank you.